the first autobiography I ever read was I Had a Hammer, the memoir by the legendary Hank Aaron. In it, he talks about growing up too poor to have any baseball equipment, so he had to swing sticks at bottle caps. The fact that he would go from these humble beginnings, through the segregation era, and on to become Major League Baseball's all-time home run king astounded me. His story is so much of what makes baseball so romantic. The way MLB The Show, Sony San Diego's annual baseball simulation, captures that romance is remarkable. The respect for the history and love of the game fuel its best parts. While it swings and misses on a few odd choices, there is no doubt that MLB The Show 24 is yet another great entry in arguably the best sports gaming franchise running today. It's the anticipation for the game today and the crack of the bat tomorrow. The pure gameplay of the show has taken no steps backwards from last year's excellent standard. Multiple control and difficulty options do a good job of giving you the ability to tailor the experience to your preferences. With more complex settings like zone hitting, rewarding a higher skill level with greater influence over what happens. It also still looks and sounds great with an updated lighting system that has the action looking more vibrant and lifelike than ever. And the feeling of this never gets old. My favorite new addition is impact plays. Great defense is a hallmark of real life baseball and adding a focus on amazing catches and difficult throws does a good job of reinforcing that. Impact plays are possible anytime you are locked as an individual ball player, like in Road to the Show. If an opportunity for a spectacular play arises, time slows down and a quick time event takes place. Runner tagging from third. How you perform here determines the success of the play. Tag. They look spectacular and it feels great to pull off an all out dive and then throw to rob a hit from a batter. I just wish impact plays would happen more frequently. Often, the moments in Diamond Dynasty mode and the chapters in storylines focus almost exclusively on getting hits or pitching innings over and over again, largely ignoring the defensive aspects of baseball. Got him. These big plays make a few appearances, but not nearly enough. Not further integrating great fielding is a missed opportunity to alleviate some of the staleness that comes with grinding these moments out. The storylines were a highlight in last year's edition, and this year continues the trend with the Negro Leagues Season 2. At launch, there are four stories, with more set to arrive in forthcoming updates. Brilliantly produced videos, narrated by the charismatic president of the Negro League Museum, Bob Kendrick, tell the stories of some of baseball's most legendary players, many of whom never had the opportunity to play in the MLB. Kendrick's youthful enthusiasm when he talks about the skinny teenager who swings his bat with a backwards grip that would go on to become Hank Aaron, maybe the greatest baseball player of all time, is so easy to get caught up in and does a great job capturing the magic and history of baseball. Well, by the end of that game, this kid Aaron had gone four for four with two home runs. A second, separate storyline track was added for this year and focuses on legendary Yankee shortstop Derek Jeter. The concept is solid. You play through key moments of his career, preceded by commentary from Jeter himself, with highlights and clips in a well-presented package. Going to play in the King Dome, never played in the Dome before. Just, you know, having a moment where you say, look, I've, I've made it. The problem is his story and that of a Yankees team that won four World Series in five years isn't very interesting. It has no adversity, nothing to overcome. And Jeter's place in the Pro Baseball Hall of Fame was secured many years before he retired. It's the only time while playing MLB The Show where I was bored. It's an especially odd choice in a game as full of amazing stories as baseball. We just as easily could have played through the eyes of Mike Piazza, a 62nd round pick who became the lowest drafted player to reach the Hall of Fame or Ichiro, coming over as the first Japanese position player and paving the way for others with his legendary career. Got it. The storyline idea is still a great concept, it just needs a better story to tell. <laughs> for the first time, women are playable in MLB The Show 24. That's a big update. 
mirroring what we've seen in NBA 2K, FIFA, and NHL in recent years. And it's implemented pretty well overall. The highlight is Tony Stone, who appears as part of the Negro League storylines as the first female professional baseball player. She has the same fanfare as her male contemporaries, and I found her story of grit and determination compelling. The harder they knock me, the harder they keep me, the harder I come back. You can also create women characters in Road to the Show, the single player campaign where you play as a prospect working your way up to the big league. I created a power hitting infielder, and I was pleased to see that the video packages and story in Road to the Show adjusted to embrace the historical achievement it would be for a woman to be drafted. And Sarah, this is a historic event this year because two female ball players receiving invites to participate in the combine. The quality did leave a bit to be desired overall, however. The various story-based cutscenes all played out via text, which stood out in a series that has traditionally been largely narrated. It veered too close to something like Superstar Mode in Madden, which isn't a compliment. The other big addition to Road to the Show is the Draft Combine. This lets your created player demonstrate their skills in front of scouts and hopefully move up to the coveted top pick. It's a cool spectacle, and I like that it grades your performance as you go. However, unlike other sports games, it doesn't seem like it affects your player's attributes. And given the fact that you can select which team drafts you instead of the other way around, it's hard to feel like it actually matters. Batting section, the first base Houston, upgrade Diamond Dynasty, the card collecting meat squad building mode, is largely unchanged from MLB The Show 23, which is mostly fine. It still plays great. Card packs full of players are awarded often and are a lot of fun to open. And the mix of single player and multiplayer options caters well to multiple playstyles, as it always has. Playing out historical moments to unlock particularly notable cards, then taking those into games is as fun and satisfying as ever. Last year saw the implementation of sets and seasons in Diamond Dynasty, which made higher rated cards more accessible but many of them were only usable in competitive modes during a two season window. This year, that formula has been adjusted. Cards are only active for a single season, but the seasons are now longer. They also reduced the number of top rated cards that are available at the start of a season. That's a good change because so much of the fun in this mode is the steady climb from a low rated team to a juggernaut squad. Still, the seasonal mode has its share of issues in general. For instance, it's hard to stay motivated to chase a great card for your team when it has an expiration date. There are wild card slots that will allow you to carry a few outdated cards, but having to decide which favorite players can no longer take the field is a bitter pill to swallow. It was because of this that last year ended up being the fastest I've jumped off of Diamond Dynasty, and while I'm hopeful that this year will be different, I remain skeptical. In the East, we may be witnessing the rise of baseball's next great rivalry. The franchise and March to October modes are back and similar to previous years. This is where you take control of your favorite team in hopes of leading them to the promised land of a World Series. They remain solid as ever and offer the usual range of control from automate everything to I want to live in spreadsheets. The best new addition though is the custom game entry. This is a setting that allows you to let your team simulate games until certain conditions are met, at which point you take control. 162 games is a lot to play, so I set myself to only come in during the ninth inning in especially high leverage situations, like a save opportunity with runners on base or a chance for a walk-off victory. It's a fantastic feature that let me focus on team management most of the time, but still let me be the deciding factor in the 20 to 30 games that make the difference between a first place finish and missing the playoffs. <laughs> Hank Aaron's motto was always keep swinging and MLB The Show 24 does just that. It continues to push the envelope for what a baseball sim can be by adding an even deeper respect for the history of the sport on top of its already excellent gameplay. Season two of the Negro Leagues is off to a fantastic start and I can't wait for the next episode to drop. The addition of women to both that and Road to the Show emphasizes Sony San Diego's commitment to the idea that baseball is for everyone.
And with great new features like custom game entry and franchise, not even a lackluster storyline in a Diamond Dynasty mode in Flux can change the fact that this is a great way to play ball. That one's carrying, and it's gone! For some slightly more extreme sports, be sure to check out our reviews of WWE 2K24 or Expeditions, a Mudrunner game. And for everything else, stick with IGN. When it's in your DNA, it's always time to play ball.